Judy Garland is in the news in the yeah. year 2023. It's like Gen Z tried to cancel Eminem. Now Gen Z is trying to cancel Judy Garland, Garland from beyond the grave. I can't think of something more ghoulish than trying to cancel someone who is dead. Like there's definitely some karmic debt that you're racking up by trying to cancel someone who is dead, especially someone like Judy Garland, who is like done so dirty by Hollywood. She was introduced to show business as a literal toddler and she was on drugs from a very young age, like literally being fed amphetamines and sleeping pills at 10 years old, given an eating disorder to keep her figure on camera, died young also of an overdose, had like no agency or no control over her career for a very long time. And now she's getting canceled for doing blackface when she was still a child, by the way. When she had no control over the roles that she was allowed to take or reject. How old is she in this? She was 17? In one of them, she was 12. In another one, she was 17. Okay. And under her parental control the entire time. Yeah. So this was from 1938. Um, there were these videos that were posted on Twitter. One said, two movies a year apart. Same bitch. Shout out to Gen Z for teaching me this. So one of these is a screenshot of her when she was about 12 wearing blackface. Uh, and then another one from her in The Wizard of Oz. The community note says, Judy Garland was a minor who had no agency over her decisions and was under a highly abusive management. As an adult in the 1960s, she became a very vocal supporter of the civil rights movement. Yep. Um, so basically, you're Supported trying to Martin cancel a child for something that they had no choice in doing. And then they tried to refute this and posted another clip of her claiming she was 21 in it. When if you do the math, she was 17 in it. Yeah. And I just don't understand what the value is in, in trying to cancel someone who is dead, who did this at a time when this was culturally acceptable also they don't yeah but the thing is they don't look didn't at it that have way. control over taking the role or rejecting it it's the same people who like when a college professor says to you like would you have stood up for against slavery when it was and every imparted? stupid person thinks that they would be the one yeah. to to be a revolutionary or whatever and and in fact they wouldn't be uh, but they don't have the humility to recognize they that. They won't even do it by getting rid of their cell phone, which is being made by child slaves in other countries. Yeah. Yeah. One person said, I think we're spending too, too much time absolving Judy Garland and we're overlooking more productive conversations young people would find more helpful if they're learning about all this stuff for the first time. Judy was asked to do this because white people found this as an acceptable form of entertainment in the 1930s. It's baked into the foundations of American pop culture that's deeply unsettling, especially when a familiar face makes that fact obvious, real, and recent. I also love, there, there's just something to me that's just so current year about the fact that then they show the picture of Robert Downey Jr. and they're like, that's yeah. fine though, because we like him. Or, or uh, let's talk about Justin Trudeau's blackface. Or let's talk about Sarah Silverman doing blackface or any of these people who are accepted by the establishment and also who, who wore blackface in a time when it was not socially acceptable yeah. or baked into pop culture. Yeah. But because she did it when it was still socially acceptable, she should get dragged on it. To me, for, what this always and While is. she's literally like in the ground. Yep. She died in 69, right? She, yeah. Yeah. So she, At like 47 years old. Disco uh, had been in, born and died. This woman is in her grave right now. Yep. Like. What I find most sad about all of these conversations, with the people who have these discussions online especially, is like, it. Oh, there's a $20 one right there from Crispy Leg Transport, LLC. It says, He's, uh, got that? Oh, he said, uh, those cancel people need to go touch some grass. Yeah. Like what it is to me and as a response to that, it's kind of like we always judge by how it was rather than how far we've come. And it's more important, I think, to judge just how much progress has been made in such a short period of time than it is to go back and focus on what happened 100 years ago, especially mm -hmm. when our attention spans barely allow us to think about what happened a week ago. Well, I also just don't think that you need to even justify this by saying, oh, no, it's OK. She was uh, anti-racist and she was a supporter of the civil rights movement. 
later on. Yeah. You don't need to even defend her with that. You can just defend her on the basis that this is a human being who has been dead for much longer than like the time before you were born yeah. and doesn't deserve to have her name dragged through the mud for something that she did when she was a child. Yep. It doesn't matter if she, you know, repaired her reputation in your eyes after the fact. Yeah. Like it's just ghoulish and evil to drag someone's name like this through the mud after they're dead. Yeah. And their family members are going to see this. And like, you know, her family was in show business even before she was born. And imagine how bad it was before then. I will say that I, I do kind of like a lot of the comments are like, I don't care, move on. Like from all groups seem to be saying like, what, what is, why is this making the rounds again? Why do you care? Uh, and it does show the political expediency of it when it's uh, like something like this, which is uh, politically neutral, meaning that they can use it to benefit them. Whereas if it's somebody like Trudeau, that will just go missing and nobody will remember it or sarah silverman it'll go missing nobody then all of a sudden it's it's misremembered robert downey jr is given a pass because we all love robert downey jr uh so it's selective outrage at its finest you get to decide what who you're else angry has about done this day. lots of people have, have done it they, they mention lots of people in the in the comment section of this right here but the, the there are even like a ton of youtubers who have gotten called out for doing this Oof, in the um, age of the internet yeah and, where everything's permanent it's uh, it, it just it, it is really this that people are angry and it's and it's a day that ends in why. Like you don't want people to dig up the ugly things you've done. Yeah. Like everyone has done questionable shit. I like people posting the scenes from White Chicks in here. Yeah, like everyone loves White Chicks. Everyone loves that movie. Yeah. Now I get it. It doesn't have the same historical cultural context. Exactly. Obviously, it does not. it's not done with malice and hatred. But like, I think that we can at least be happy with the fact that this is no longer a part of our pop culture and we don't uh, consider this acceptable anymore. Well, that's the point, Why right? can't we just be happy with that? That we've made the progress. That's what matters. But the point is that we made like the progress. They're like addicted to the outrage. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're they're going to continue just resurrecting it over and over again. But also remember then when, when you race swap the characters and we get Ariel and Snow White and then you're told to not care because it's about representation like over correcting so yeah. badly right now yep. uh to the point where everyone is more divided and they're tar and feathering someone's corpse i i did like it's that just gross angela bel camino got in on this uh <laughs> saying fun fact judy garland is more talented than beyonce taylor swift and zendaya combined <laughs> and the first comment the, the gen z is not gonna like that and and damon toll whoever responds says mag angela kel me bel camino <laughs> mega <laughs> Jala Bel Camino. Uh, and, you know, it's it's sad. It's and sad because it's you're taking someone, like you said, they're kind of uh, ignoring the fact that she had a really, really rough life. Like yeah. A, and then still, and, but became like an advocate for civil shoes. rights. Somebody who, who became an advocate for civil rights later on. What you do as you grow matters as much as the mistakes you make when you're younger. And let's talk about the, the societal ills that were a part of Judy Garland's experience that are still in Hollywood today, which the fact that she was sexually abused by executives in these Hollywood studios, I am... I am sure I would die on this hill that that is still happening today to child stars and adults, I'm sure, too. Yeah. Um, but nobody wants to talk about that because it's not a hot button, trendy issue that BuzzFeed is going to cover. Yep. And you're going to continue like shitting on Sound of Freedom. Oddly <laughs> enough, it does. Like, I mean, it's not like they don't cover it when the Nickelodeon stuff comes up, but it never seems to hold the news the way that you'd expect Even it to. People like Dan Schneider or Harvey Weinstein, uh, as legitimately guilty as they are, were made into sacrificial lambs to protect everybody else in Hollywood who is continuing to be predators. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not going to get named and shamed. I just. Like they deserve to be. But that's an ongoing problem in Hollywood that deserves to be talked about. But nobody's doing blackface in Hollywood now. Mm. Like, this is a long gone issue. Uh, I would like to talk about things that are relevant to the present day. But the thing, both sides... And, and about people this, who are alive and who yeah. can answer for their actions. When this stuff happens, both sides say... On either side. When, when, when this comes up and everyone that's in this comment section is saying, well, you know, it's long, she's long dead, cry about it. 
it's it's not a big deal anymore. They're not doing it anymore. And then when they race swap characters and everybody comes out and says, I can't believe they're race swapping my characters that I love so much. And then the other side says, oh, it's about inclusion and representation. Cry about it. Like both <laughs> sides just say the same thing. Everybody always responds with cry about it. Not my problem. But at least when it comes to race swaps, we're just responding to something that's happening today. Currently, yes. Instead of resurrecting an old like what uh, like almost a hundred year old clip of somebody who's dead yep um and it's uh and, and even then it's it's selectively enforced right yeah like like i said like uh they didn't make a big deal when tilda swinton played the ancient one in the original doctor strange because they didn't want to piss off china um, they didn't make a big deal about uh, Ben Affleck playing Mendez uh, in Argo because Mendez gave his okay, gave his blessing for it and said it was fine. Mm -hmm. But it's selective outrage whenever uh, people want to be mad. And if this is worth anything, I should mention, like in at least one of these roles where she was in blackface, she was still a white character who was doing blackface in a performance to get away from her uh, abusive... Uh, family her exploitative family members that was her character's plot which is weirdly close to her real life yeah um so i mean it's not quite as bad but i mean i'm not condoning it i'm just saying like there is context to every one of these snapshots in history and they're not really concerned with the context they just want to feel superior yeah, and there was a lot of outrage from the person who was like, the person who was upset about this was really upset about it and was calling her names and uh, it wasn't done in a way that was like seeking to, to figure out what was going on so that they could understand it and come to a resolution. It was about being angry. Yeah. Um, but, the, but it's almost like, like you said, it's designed to not have a resolution because the actress has long since passed. So you can't fix it. She can't come out and apologize. And that probably angers them even more because they love to get the fake apology. They <laughs> love the apology that they know the person doesn't mean because they want to get the person to bow to their will. They might be expecting her, yeah, her children family. to, her, her, yeah, her surviving family I wouldn't to be surprised. answer for it. I wouldn't I be hope surprised that they don't. Liza Minnelli, if you're watching this, please, please don't bow to the mob. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.